Okay, today I thought we'd talk about and play with Hasbro's Electronic Wizard Mentor, or Mentor, depending on how you want to say it. Um, I think it came out in 1960, and it's an electric... I'm saying electronic isn't... I don't know. It's battery operated, how's that? And uh, it's basically a game where the robot, the mentor, can move one, two, or three places when it's his turn, and the player, which would be me in this case, can move one, two, or three places when it's my turn. And the goal is to be in the last hole, the winning hole, sort of like, uh, you know, when you get your hands and you stack them on top of a baseball bat to see who reaches the top. It's the type of thing, who can be in the last hole. Anyway, it comes with, uh, what do we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different uh, board games, or game boards. Uh, underneath the mentor gold head right there <coughs> are two D cells. And as you can see, here is a probe finger that you use to move along the playing field. And here are the three lights, and they say one, two, and three. Um, let's look at the box before we get into the game. If I can, it's a really a big box. It's actually huge. Uh, take a look. Take a look at me compared to this box. I mean, it's uh, it's gigantic. Anyway, I, I have the not only the original box but all of the inserts. But more important than uh, the inserts is uh, there is an instruction sheet which you can use the pause feature and read. Basically explains to you what I just told you. Uh, both sides, even though they look different, basically say the same things. take a look at the different uh, game boards that come with it. What do we got? This one's called Jack and the Beanstalk. Place the pawn in the pawn hole. Take turns with Mentor. Moving forward one, two, or three holes each turn. Try to move the pawn into the giant's castle on your turn. So that would be the finish. That's the giant's castle. You want to be there. If Mentor ends up being there, then Mentor wins. There's only one game per side. So that was uh, that one. This one's called Danger Island. It's where the pond can start. And here's the first hole. And there's the finish line. What else do we have? American Tour. Oh, these, these things are numbered, too. I could have been going in number. So, let's, let's correct that. American Tour appears to be card number one. Card number two is hole-in-one. It's a golf. And you're going to start here. And there's the finish up, up here. I believe they all say the same type of thing down below. So that's one. That's two. Uh, it says eight, that one says six, that says five. So Jack and the Beanstalk, although it's kind of cut off, was three. Four is sitting uh, in the game. So four is Counterplot. And here's five, looks like a solar system type thing. Return to Earth. And here's six. City Streets. 
Wow, that one's got a lot of holes, a lot of choices. Seven we already saw, that's the Danger Island. And eight, Treasure Hunt. So, let's start with card one. So basically, the idea so I got to try to get the camera back far enough where you can see Mentor and yet still see what the heck I'm doing. It's kind of hard. I need uh, someone up higher shooting down. You place the board game in question onto the panel. Here you have Mentor's hand probe and it says pawn goes there, so the pawn goes there. Then it doesn't matter who goes first, the player or Mentor. So, me as the player, here's a start mark. I'm going to go first, and I'm going to go... I'm going to go one. I'll just select one. So now it's Mentor's turn, and in order to find out how many moves Mentor wants to go, you push down on the top of his head, and whatever light lights tells you how many. So the number two light has lit. So you move two places, one, two. That's where Mentor wants to be. Now it's my turn again. Um, why don't I go to one, two. So now it's Mentor's turn. I'll push it down on top of his head. Hmm, says two again. One, two. So now it's my turn. Why don't I get aggressive? I'll go three. One, two, three. Now it's Mentor's turn. Ah, Mentor only wants to go one this time. So we move Mentor one. And why don't I follow suit? I'll just go one. Mentor wants to go three. One, two, three. Oh, and that's the finish. So Mentor has won. I wonder what happens if you push the head when you're in the finish line. Oh, it still works. <laughs> so that's basically the way the game's supposed to be played. As you can see, Mentor is going to pretty much win every time. I guess if you were from, since they can only move three, one, two, three, so by the fourth hole, one, two, three, if it's your turn by the fourth hole and you're there and it's like that, you've lost. You have to make a decision by the fifth hole. So if you're five holes away from the finish, if you just happen to be, then you could move one. The most mentor could move would be three. One, two, three. That means in your next turn you could move one and win. So that'd be the way, that'd be one way to win. If you're five moves away from the finish line, only move one place. Well, anyway. There's Mentor for you. Uh, as far as the D-cells go, you, you uh, push down on this, pull back. This lifts off. Mentor himself is just a piece of plastic. And the two D-cells sit right in there just like a, a flashlight type thing. Um, I took some pictures of the inside when I was in there fixing a bad connection. I have not viewed them yet on the computer. But they should be on here, so let's take a look. Uh, should be in pictures. Scroll down. And here we go. This is a picture of the circuit board. Now you gotta remember, this is 1960. Almost nothing had printed circuit boards. Everything was still tubes for the most part. TVs, radios, hi fi's, pretty much all still tubes and point to point soldering. It was really tough to find anything that had. A circuit board. So this is the closest thing you're going to find. They took a piece of cardboard, and they glue foil on it, and then stamp it halfway down through the cardboard to cut the foil to leave traces. So they basically have made three different traces. A number one trace, a number two trace, and a number three. And that gives you your different patterns due to the way they've staggered everything. So even your battery contacts rivet right onto the foil to form one side of the connection. The other side goes to the switch that gets pushed down by Mentor's head to close that circuit out to the prawn, out to the finger thing. 
So it's really kind of uh, super inexpensive. One piece build. Here's a picture of it with the batteries in place. So you can see with the two D cells set, this is the prawn finger thing sitting here. The three lights are in place. So depending on where that little probe is sitting, when you push the button, it's going to tell it which light to light. So it's a real simplistic uh, electrical circuit. Three circuits, I guess. If you want to count the switch, four circuits. That uh, make the game work.